The second part of simplex is we take the standard form and we put it in our, our table. Our initial table is called the initial feasible. For filling in the basis, we have a few rules. For the basis, there's one variable per constraint. If we add the slack, if there's no slack, we add the artificial. So we see we have three constraints. So we have three in the, the basis. We have three basic variables in the basis. The first one is slack. We have both slack in S1 and S2. So S1, S2. Our third constraint, we don't have any slack. We have surplus, but we do have an artificial variable. So that's A3. Now, the second thing we do is we bring our objective function and we put it up top. We have x1, x2, s1, s2, s3, and a3. The coefficients are 250, 400, 0, 0, 0, and minus n. So I have 250, 400, 0, 0, 0, and minus n. We take the coefficients from the objective functions and we put them in our basis. So we have 0, 0, minus n. For the next portion, this is called our subrate. To fill in the subrate, we bring in our, <clears throat> our functions. So for S1, we have 8x1, we have 4x2, 1, 0, 0, 0. This will be a unit vector. There's only, we know these two have to be 0 right here. For example, the second subrate, 2, 6, 0, 1, 0, 0. And third, we bring in the third, 2.5. 3, 0, 0, minus 1, and 1. Next, we calculate z. z is calculated as the summation of our c in the basis times our subrate. What this means is 0 times 8 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, and negative m times 2.5 is negative 2.5m. 0, 0, negative 3m. 0, 0, m, negative m. Next, we calculate our next net evaluation row by taking C minus Z. This C, we use the coefficients up here. So this comes out to 250 plus 2.5M. Next comes out to 400 plus 3M. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Um, negative m and 0. Just to make sure everybody got this, we were subtracting. So it's 250 minus a negative m. So it comes out to... So this would equal out to 250 plus 2.5m. All right, so that's where that comes from. Next, we fill in our Q. Our Q is simply the quantity we have left of each of our constraints. We haven't used any S1, so we have 80. We haven't used any S2, so we have 48. 
We haven't used any of our third constraint, so we have 36. The final thing we want to calculate is what's called our Z sub Q, or our profit. Now this is easy. We know we're starting at 0, 0, so we know our profit's going to be 0. But we would calculate it as the summation <coughs> of our, of our uh, C in the basis times Q. And so for our profit here would be negative 36M. And of course, we're not making any money at the origin. 